Hello everyone, I'm Chris Paul here and today I have a special video for you. This video is special because I'm going to talk about the Duolingo test. Yes, I tried it, not only once or twice, but many times. And I'm going to tell you everything about it. Ivan, what is the Duolingo test? The Duolingo test is a proficiency test, just like the TOEFL or IELTS. The only difference between the Duolingo test and TOEFL or IELTS is that the Duolingo is more convenient. It is more convenient because you can take it online, anywhere, anytime. And you will only take one hour to do the test. And it only costs $49. This is awesome. $49. Wow. Yes. The Duolingo test is affordable. While the TOEFL test costs over $200. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Okay, so again, the Duolingo test only costs $49. Another great thing about the Duolingo is that you get your results in only two days. Yeah. That's right, only two days. You don't have to wait so many days, like when you take the TOEFL or IELTS. If I'm not mistaken, you have to wait 10 days to get your results when you take the TOEFL test. And that's too many. If you take the Duolingo, you just have to wait two days. That's awesome. And you can send your results to as many universities as you want because the Duolingo test is accepted by thousands of universities all over the world, and especially in the US. So if you are applying to graduate school or undergrad school, the Duolingo is free. If I know my followers, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, Ivan, you mentioned the TOEFL test, IELTS, and the Duolingo test. And I already know that the Duolingo test is accepted all over the world. But you didn't say which test was the best one. So what is the best proficiency test? The TOEFL test, uh, the Duolingo test, or IELTS? And is the Duolingo test reliable? Guys, I'm going to talk about these things at the end of this video. Now, now I'm going to talk about uh, the test itself. And I'm going to start talking about a very interesting thing about the Duolingo test. The Duolingo test is adaptive, adaptive. And that means that the questions can get harder or easier. So it, it depends on you. For example, if you start getting things right, the questions become harder. And if you start getting things wrong, the test becomes easier. Isn't that cool? I'm going to show you all the questions in the test, but before I talk about them, let's see a short clip. This uh, short clip is about the test setup. Just watch the clip and you're going to understand the whole thing. Let me talk about the different kinds of questions. 
So the first kind of question that I got was a listening question. So I had to, uh, to listen to a statement and type what I understood, what I listened to. So I could play the audio uh, three times, but uh, my tip for you is uh, you play it once and then you type everything. Then you play it again and you check what you typed before and you add words and then you play it uh, your last time, the third time, and then you check everything. So the, the first, second times uh, were easier, but the other times were hard. Sorry, I forgot to say something. I said the other times because this question repeats lots of times, uh, six or seven times. Is she reading a book? Yes, she is. The second kind of question that I got, I had many words. Some words were real English words and some words were fake words. So I had to, I had to pick, I had to select uh, the real words. So my tip for you here is trust your guts because the fake words look real. The third kind of question that I got, I had a picture and I had to describe the picture. I had to write uh, a text. They say uh, one sentence or two sentences. I guess one or two sentences, but write more because you have time. So you say, in this picture, there is blah, 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 blah. And if you still have time, try to tell a story, okay? so. It's not just about labeling, but you can tell a story. It's better. The fourth kind of question that I got, I had to listen to many words. And again, some were real English words and some words were fake. Then I had to select the real ones. But be careful because uh, the fake ones sound like real ones. Selfully. You sequent. Responsibility. Bonus. You know, the hardest one. I mean, in my opinion, this was the, the hardest kind of question. In this kind of question, you have a text. It's, it's an academic text. And you have to complete with the missing letters. Okay, so you have a word and you have like two or three letters and you have to complete with the, the missing letters. It was super hard because uh, it's academic and it's about fields that I'm not familiar with. So it was hard for me. The sixth kind of question was probably my favorite kind of question. Um, I had a sentence and I had to pronounce the sentence. It was easy, but I didn't have much time. And this question repeated uh, two or three times. Mathematical and computer models are produced and field research is done to test the models. The seventh kind of question was a writing question. So. I had a question and I had to answer the question and I had to write at least 50 words. Uh, I guess the important thing here is to structure well your paragraph. So you start writing uh, a nice sentence to introduce your subject. Then uh, you're going to use words like first or firstly, uh, first blah, 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 secondly, blah, 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 just to organize your ideas. And then to finish, you can use something like in conclusion, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you have to structure well your paragraph. The eighth kind of question was a speaking question and I could not read the question. I could just uh, listen to it. And it was uh, super hard for me because it was about 
abstract things. I mean, all the times that I took the test, this question was about abstract things or about um, academic things that I was not familiar with. So, uh, if you have to talk about, my tip for you is, if you have to talk about something that you're not familiar with, you can start by saying why you think uh, the question is so challenging and you can say that you don't understand anything about it. Yeah, you can just, you have to say something because it's a speaking activity. So if you don't understand about uh, what, what is being asked, you have to say something, okay? You have to say something and say in, in an organized way and I am pretty sure you're gonna do a great job. Describe a situation when you have given or received praise. So after observing the situation for a while, I proposed... The next kind of question was, was actually only one question. Every time I took the test was only one question. And it was one of my favorite questions in the test. It's a speaking question. Uh, you have a picture and you have to describe the picture. You had something similar before to remember, but it was a, a writing activity before. Uh, this one is a speaking activity. Uh, so you have a picture and you have to describe the picture. And again, uh, you have to tell a story. Yes, it's, a, it's important that you tell a story. Uh, it's not just about labeling. You have to tell a story and use nice words, not just basic words, but nice words, sophisticated words. They like them. Along the street, there is a place in which... And then you have the last question, which is a speaking question, a speaking activity. So you have a prompt uh, with a, a few questions and you have to answer the questions, okay? So you can read or you don't even need to read, okay? But you have to answer the questions and make sure you use uh, transitions like Moving on to the second question, and finally, because you have to organize your ideas, okay? It's a nice question. All children, regardless of their family income, can receive at least nine years of education. At the end of the test, you have two extra questions, but these questions are ungraded, okay? Ungraded. They're not great, these questions. Uh, the questions are, the first one, uh, an interview, okay, so it's a video interview, and a writing sample, writing sample, so you have to write. Uh, even though they're not graded, I think you should do something nice, okay? Have, have to uh, record a nice interview and uh, write something really cool because you're gonna send these two questions uh, to the universities, so you're gonna see them. One thing that I particularly like about my personality is that I'm a very open-minded person. And now, guys, what you wanted to know, my opinion about the Duolingo English test. Ivan, is it good? Ivan, is it better than uh, the TOEFL test or IELTS? Ivan, is it reliable? Okay, guys, I want to answer your questions, but before I do that, I have to say something. I need to say something. I've already taken three proficiency tests in my life. The Duolingo, I took Duolingo many times because I wanted to record this video. IELTS and the TOEFL. I only took the TOEFL and IELTS because I'm an English teacher and I thought it was important to know uh, the tests. But I didn't need uh, the TOEFL or IELTS. 
So I took uh, these uh, three tests. And in my opinion, the best one is the Duolingo English test. Really, it's the Duolingo English test. When I, when I took the TOEFL test, I had the impression that they were not testing my English. They were more concerned about other things. So English was not so important. For example, I had the impression that uh, the time management was more important than my fluency. Isn't that crazy? But it doesn't happen when you take the Duolingo English test. It's different. When you take the Duolingo, it's clear that they're testing your English and they're testing your general English and your academic English. So it's a much more complete test and it tests your English. That's the most important thing. And there's one last thing that I wanted to say about the Duolingo English test. I had fun taking the test. It was good. It was not like TOEFL that was super boring or IELTS that was boring. Ugh. No, the Duolingo is nice, it's cool. I had fun. Like, oh, if I could, I would take the Duolingo every single day because it's a great test. And if you don't trust me, you can go to the Duolingo English test website and practice for free because they have something like a Mac and you can practice for free. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it. Okay, that's all for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. And if you have any questions about the Duolingo English test, please leave a comment down below. Take care.